And you think that you up and up and stuck, but you really down and bound for all of y'all men who think you can put your in somebody and they just rock like that. Greetings, y'all, and welcome to See Things Above TV. I'm your host, Lou Chikuni. So fresh off the heels of talking about Tiffany Montgomery's little fight that she's got going on with Celestio and Joanne Gabriel. We're also going to be taking a look at one of the main character flaws that she seems to be displaying over and over again, and that is an uncontrolled, untamed tongue that she is using to basically just speak out filthy language and to do so like there is no problem with it and somehow this is her right to do so and part of her being in authority. So we're going to take a look at that today, man. If y'all like content like this, y'all know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe. Let's take a look at these clips and I'll give commentary as we go along. For thinking that I was high enough to beat this dragon when I should have really bowed to you while you fought this battle for me. So he said, I'm going to go before you because a lot of the reasons these gates have been closed is because there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a king of Leviathan, a king of pride that stopped it from you going through it. You heard of the word narcissistic. That's somebody that deals with a spirit of pride. The king of pride is its ruler. So when he says, I'm going to go before you and I'm going to make this crooked place straight, that means whoever thought that they could cock block what God was doing, so there is absolutely no place for this kind of language from somebody who claims to be a believer, let alone somebody who claims to be a teacher. OK, the fact that she claims to be a teacher and has the freedom to speak this way and to talk to people in this manner and use this language in front of. And there might be children in that audience to use this kind of language is silly. And then to it's, it's beyond silly. It's 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 irreverent and it's. Uh, ungodly. Okay. So for her to do this and to use this language where it's not even something that you would associate with our holy God, you wouldn't associate this language where you're talking about literally, this is like locker room language for uh, guys who are <laughs> irreverent and growing up and immature talking like this about not being able to get something from a woman. That's literally what this language refers to. And you're now putting that kind of language in the realm of talking about the things of God and teaching on a platform. It's completely unacceptable. Now, this is probably the worst clip among them all. So I will warn you of the language here as though, I mean, we haven't already done that, but this is here going to display how she is completely unhinged and has a complete lack of self-control when it comes to her mouth. He said, I'm going to go before you and I'm going to make the crooked places straight. I will break the pieces of the gates of brass. I thought the word gate here was powerful. It means crocodile jaws. It means an easily accessible woman. That is the Hebrew definition of the word gate. Crocodile jaws, an easily accessible woman, which means you men who are sleeping with these women, who are trying to figure out why your destiny is destroyed, who is trying to figure out why you're 40 and your life hasn't gotten anywhere, who is trying to figure out why you think you, you thought you could cheat on your wife and you think that you up and up and stuck, but you really down and bound for all of y'all men who think you can put your dick in somebody and it just rock like that? Even if you want to be forceful and drive a point home when you are talking about the things of God, there is never a place. There is absolutely never a place where you are allowed to step out of Christian character that has been clearly outlined in scripture for us in order to make a point and for you to use foul language when you are doing it. There is just no place where you can try to reconcile that with the scriptures. It just does not exist. If she wants to warn people about sexual immorality, she can simply warn them about sexual immorality. 
All you have to say is say that sentence and we get it. We get it. Warn men that they need to love their wives. They need to be faithful. And that there's a reason for that because marriage is a picture of the gospel. You can warn men of that. And, and, and by the way, it is much more powerful when you use what is actually in the text of scripture to make a point and make people understand rather than trying to add your own fleshly attitudes and fleshly heart posture to what you're saying. A woman is not just a woman. I get so many emails. There's a reason I be telling y'all not to email me. But I still get emails from people saying to me, women shouldn't preach. I'm like, first of all, are we in 1453? Because if you had the balls and you actually did the job up here, maybe I wouldn't have to. So we hear her in this clip speak in a manner that is demeaning and insulting to all the men that are there, claiming that they don't have the testicular fortitude to be able to get up and preach, and that is why she is preaching. It is utterly ridiculous. It is very disrespectful, and I don't even understand how the men in there could be cheering because you hear like some people cheering and all this stuff and there's men in the room. I don't understand how men in there could be cheering and listening to this stuff and people who follow her at all in any setting, any men who follow her at all in any setting, how they could be listening to this stuff. I mean, it is absolutely ridiculous for her to say that. And that is not even the justification for her as a woman to be preaching because we know it's clear in the scriptures. And she tries to do some gymnastics in this video clip to uh, somehow say that Paul got it wrong and this, that, and the third. We're not going to get into that right here, but it is crystal clear in the scriptures. We know that this is basically a 20 and uh, a 21st century problem where now all of a sudden, along with all the other things that we see that are problems in scripture, all of a sudden that were clear for, for centuries, um, this is one of those problems as well, where now there needs to be a discussion apparently about whether uh, Paul meant what he said when he said he doesn't permit women to teach, when it's crystal clear in the text. But she takes this opportunity here and just speaks so rudely and insult in a very insulting manner to all the men that are there. And these things, people, are not small things, okay? These are the, the markings of somebody who now feels that they have grown wings and they are above any kind of accountability, can't be told nothing, and she feels like she's doing this because she has this so-called authority from God and the word from God and she's a prophet. It's utter nonsense. In all of this, what we're actually seeing is Tiffany has a lack of self-control. That is what it is, because you see her actually get angry even when she's talking about other people in the other videos that we may have looked at over here where she's having her beefs with these other false prophetesses you see her well up in anger and speak in this mean-spirited manner so this woman just lacks self-control and we're going to take a few uh, look at a few verses here that talk about self-control in the scriptures in james chapter 3 we see a very good passage to talk about how the things that we say matter to God and also that our words are, they have significance and there is a consequence for what comes out of our mouths. Okay. So you see in this passage here where it actually starts off with James warning people that not many should become teachers, right? We, we know this passage, but the reason and the core of what is underlying all of this is it's because of what you say and how it matters and the gravity of what you say. So when we go down to uh, verse five over here, I'll just go to verse five, start from there. It says, so also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among members, staining the whole body setting on fire the entire course of life and set on fire by hell for every kind of beast and bird of reptile and sea creature can be tamed. It can be tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue It is a restless evil 
full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. So James is making a point here to say that the tongue is one thing that we need to actually try to tame. Like we need to understand that what comes out of our mouths is so important. And and in this passage, man, when you look at uh, verse nine here, when it says, with it, we bless our Lord and our father. And with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. I mean, the the we're literally seeing somebody do that here. So she is out here using foul language, the same mouth that is supposed to be a mouth that is an instrument of God's grace and mercy is now a, a, an instrument that is being used to insult people. And this is all happening in the same message by somebody who is supposed to be a teacher. And so we should really tremble when we look at verses like this. When we look at passages like this, we should actually have a, a good, healthy sense of, of fear. And there should be a, a, a reverence that anybody who aspires to teach in any setting for the Lord should have when they step to the pulpit or they step in a classroom. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at Colossians 4, 6. Colossians 4, 6 says, let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. So we're supposed to have this speech that is seasoned with salt, with, with grace, graciousness to, to how we speak, especially as somebody who claims to be a teacher. You're supposed to do that. That shouldn't even, you shouldn't even have to be told about this. Okay. Of course, there's Ephesians four, Ephesians five, four, let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. And now this passage I think is really vital in this discussion. And that is Titus two. So it starts off with, but as for you teach what accords with sound doctrine, Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, okay? So now jump down a little bit, verse 3, older women likewise, right? So likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and so train the young women to love their husbands and children to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands. So again, self-control pops up. If you go down to the younger men, self-control pops up. And so self-control should produce certain character traits. Like we, we, we withhold ourselves from being in our flesh in various different ways. And one of those ways is the way we speak. So we know even in anger, that there are ways that we wouldn't speak to somebody because we need to exhibit self-control, which we know is a fruit of the spirit. And we're not seeing those fruits of the spirit from Tiffany Montgomery. So what you're seeing here is how Tiffany Montgomery is disqualified from teaching in any single format. Like she shouldn't be teaching Sunday school. She should not be teaching children's ministry. She shouldn't be teaching anybody because she lacks these fruits of the spirit self-control, which leads to a control of how she speaks. And instead, you see this sort of tyrannical, I'm the boss, authoritative thing, lording it over everybody. And that is the mentality that she displays. Shout out to K-Dub for commenting on this, man. When I saw this, I was like, this is unbelievable. We got to talk about this. Man, Tiffany Montgomery, If for y'all who follow her and actually believe this woman is of God, please, Go and wrestle with some of these texts that we've talked about today and then go and read more of the scriptures on just the character of a godly woman, period. OK, go godly person, a person of God, like just read more about that. What does godliness even mean? Like go and study these things and then ask yourself if you're seeing that from Tiffany Montgomery and ask yourself if she's not displaying that. Why do you think you should even be listening to her in the first place? This is not even getting into her false prophecies and all that other stuff. But y'all, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And 
If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. All right. God bless y'all. And I will see y'all on the next one. Peace. Thank you.